What is up everybody? Piano Joe here and today is part four and probably the final part of this Yamaha CP80 restoration. So guys, it's been a really fun journey so far. Um, after getting the CP70, I just fell in love with these types of pianos. So this one was just an absolute dream to work on. I absolutely loved restoring this thing to its former glory and just it's a beautiful instrument now again and I'm just super happy that I was able to do it and you guys watching so hopefully you learned and were able to probably take some of my um, suggestions into your own restorations so um, but before getting into looking at this thing I just wanted to mention what I've been doing between part three and part four so if you guys remember um, I actually needed to get it tuned so it actually took a while because you have to wait a month in between tunings to just let the strings fully settle because um, they're actually stretching out again remember so it's kind of like a guitar you gotta just let it um, just stretch a little bit then you tune it again but guitars you can do it within a few minutes but pianos you actually have to wait a little bit of a while before tuning it again so I got two tunings so now it's pretty much almost up to pitch I believe it's like A434 35 I don't know it should be A440 but it's pretty much up to tune now um, so it's it's pretty much done now also if you remember I was missing a hammer because it broke off I didn't break it but I got it with the hammer missing already so I've been looking around, I've been trying eBay, Reverb, um, even European sites. I'm not going to mention the site because I don't want to give them any business because the hammer is just stupid expensive and the shipping was ridiculous so I decided forget it. I'm not paying that much for a hammer, that's just stupid. Um, so I was trying eBay, I thought I found a seller, turned out he's not answering. So that kind of ticked me off a little bit. I'm like, come on, man. You, you, you're going to post something and say you could sell other pieces and they don't even respond? Like, you know, one of those spam sellers, I guess. So I'm probably going to continue searching for it and possibly just make an update video. But for the purpose of this video, this is pretty much going to be the final part of the restoration series. So, um, oh yeah, last thing. I've also been working on just finishing touches for this thing in between the parts. I wasn't really filming it because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Turned out it was amazing. So in this part, I'm actually going to show you what I did, how I did it, and then uh, hopefully you can do it to your pianos as well and make them play and sound beautiful. So the two things that I did was um, further lubricate the action, which I'm going to show you how. It's not the Teflon powder. It's actually um, a liquid, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I also cleaned the potentiometer, so pretty much the whole preamp, all the highs, the mids, the treble, you know, all that stuff. Volume, tremolo, brilliance knob, all that stuff I sprayed with, um, with the potentiometer cleaner. And I'm going to show you how to do that too, because it can be a little bit tricky on these pianos. So, now what you wanted to see, sorry about the long intro. Let's look at how beautiful this thing has turned out. All right, everyone, so here we are at the front of the piano, and we're going to be focusing right now on the preamp. So all the treble, the mids, the bass, brilliance knob, tremolo, depth, speed, all that fun stuff. I'm going to be showing you how to clean those potentiometers and the switch, and then I'm going to start talking about some of the circuitry and how I fixed the outputs because um, what actually was happening was I wasn't getting balanced the balance so the XLR cables weren't picking up signal as well as um, I forget now what side but one of the unbalanced outputs was not working as well so I'm going to show you how to fix those connections um, hopefully if you're having that problem it's as simple as it was with mine so now let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need to clean all the potentiometers and switches. So what I use is this Deoxic D5, which you can get from 
pretty much anywhere I got this off of Amazon. And one thing that you want to know, I mean, this does have a bunch of warnings about how it is toxic and stuff. And of course, you're going to be wanting to be in a well-ventilated area. You're going to want to have probably gloves on because when this stuff gets on your hands, it is a lubricant. So it like, gets all nasty and it's harder to wash off. Um, but I am pretty sensitive with chemicals and stuff. But this doesn't really seem to bother me, so if you're worried about that, this seems to be a pretty safe cleaner as long as you use common sense and have some protection like the gloves. So this is a good cleaner to use and it worked actually really well on my piano. The next thing you're going to want is pretty obvious, just a paper towel and this is just going to be um, just to protect any areas that you don't want this being sprayed on because the fluid will just run and go through the potentiometer and start dripping everywhere else. It's not going to damage anything but it can get pretty messy and nasty so I just like having a paper towel to just catch the excess fluid. So let me show you what I did and how I did it. Alright everyone so here we are looking from the top of the piano and we're going to be working on this whole area here. I know it kind of looks a little bit confusing and messy but it's actually kind of simple once you get the hang of it. So first off we're going to focus on the potentiometers which are these circular gadgets here, okay? For anyone who's not sure. So all of these things. And as you can see some are double and some are not. So the depth and rate, well sorry, depth and speed <laughs> are actually double. And the volume here is double as well and then the bass, middle, and treble are single potentiometers. So how you actually clean these things is you get your deoxit and then you go into this axis point right here as you can see on all of them and you just spray you know enough and then you just kind of let it bubble in. It will bubble in a little bit because it will start going inside. And while it's doing that, you're going to be wanting to just turn it back and forth. And one thing that some people get wrong is they're just turning it like this and not fully. You want to turn it fully because what you're doing is actually pushing out all the corrosions and all any other uh, foreign objects out of it. So you want to go both fully back and forth. Because if you don't, it's going to lead you with having crackling right when you're near the end. And you don't want that to happen. So you're going to be doing that for every single one, turning it back and forth a few times. For each one. And then again, all the axis points right there. And then you're actually going to want to let it sit for like two minutes. Don't turn it on. Make sure your piano is or any instrument actually you're working on, make sure there's no power going to it for about two, three minutes, let it just fully settle in and dry. Then you can turn it on and test the potentiometers and if there's no crackling, you did a good job. If there is, you probably still did a good job but it's just really messy. So you're gonna just repeat those steps again and again to get absolutely no crackling. And what actually happened was I had to do mine about five times to get rid of all the crackling. So uh, definitely if the piano has never been fully like um, worked on before or um, maintained, you're going to be doing it a few times. So uh, let me see here. Okay, so for these double ones, they're a little bit trickier because you can have the axis point here, but then this one, the axis point is actually upside down. So what you have to end up doing is just flip this on its side. So, you know, just unlatch it, push the harp up, and then axis it from underneath and kind of just get this in here. Make sure you have your paper towel. I can't really do it with one hand, but I kind of just got a small enough piece so I protected all the other stuff and then I just sprayed it a few times and it actually turned out it worked and I got rid of all the crackling for both of these. Now for the switches. Now they're a little bit more tricky. Um, well actually not really <laughs> but what you probably have to end up doing at least for this one is you actually have to flip up the piano and access it from underneath but with this one I'm just going to show you how to do this one. 
So you can see it's just all wide open. So pretty much you just get your deoxit sprayed in just pretty much anywhere. But remember, don't put a lot. And then same thing with the potentiometers. You're just going to flip it up and down, up and down. And then you'll uh, wait the three minutes, turn it on, check if there's any crackling. If there's not, good job. If there is, just do it again. So it's actually pretty, pretty simple how to do this. So I hope that uh, kind of explained how I got mine to sound nice. So what I was noticing, um, as I said before, was my XLR as well as one of my unbalanced outputs was not getting any signal. So pretty much what I found out, the same with my CP70, is that since these are portable, they're moved around a lot and connections become loose. So what you're going to be wanting to do is if you get a wiring diagram, that will be even better. That's what I ended up doing as well. You can get those online. Um, but what you want to do is, as you can see, you can see down below are the unbalanced and up above right there are the balance. And so what I did was, as you can see, the balanced one has this brown cable. So what I did was I just followed it and I wanted to see where it went. And it ended up here. So what I did was I just pushed these down, kind of tightened them a bit up, as well as this one. Here's the other balanced output. So I just made sure that these were secure and snug. Then I went to the unbalanced output and as you can see they're coming out of this red power cable here. So now let's see where this one is going to. So as you can see it's pretty much ending up right here and it's splitting up into three cables. So we're going to be wanting to make sure that these are all snug and secure. Make sure everything's tightened up and working nice. Then what you want to do is you want to turn on your instrument, test it out, and what I found was mine worked. So I'm really hoping if you guys are having that same issue that this helps you out. So let me just show you close up so you can get these wires correct because sometimes the diagrams aren't colored so you don't really know. So that's how that's all looking. And they're just soldered on right there. All right, everyone. So now I'm going to be showing you how to further lubricate the action with what is called a center pin lubricant. And now I'm going to be showing you what center pins are, how to lubricate them, and then what else you can actually use this lubricant on. So before getting into that, I want to show you what supplies you're going to be needing to complete this. So you're going to want one of these applicator bottles which has a syringe tip on it. You can get these pretty much anywhere, um, but they are just a lifesaver because you don't need to take apart the action to use this. And it just, it's very fine, it just lets out a few droplets of this stuff and that's all you need for each center pin, which I'm going to get into later. Now, this lubricant that I use is Protec Center Pin Lubricant. Um, you can get this off of like any piano site pretty much um, and this stuff is actually really really like oily but not in the sense of like oil but when you get it on your hands it's like it's you can tell it's a lubricant uh, it's hard to wash off um, but it's pretty much non-toxic surprisingly it doesn't hurt me at all um, I'm not drinking it or smelling it, but I mean like getting it on your hands and stuff, you don't really have to worry about it that much. But if you don't want that annoying oily sensation, just wear gloves and then you shouldn't really have to worry about that. But this is what it actually looks like. It's a yellowish solution. And what you're going to do is make, of course, make sure, be careful not to spill this everywhere. So do it over a sink but you're going to want to fill up your applicator bottle to maximum for an 88 key piano the maximum I would fill this is maybe even less than quarter of this bottle because this stuff really goes a long way you only need a few droplets um, so now that we got that out of the way let me show you 
what I've been doing and how to do it. Okay everyone, so here we are at the top of the piano. And let me just show you what we are going to be lubricating. So a center pin is this piece right here. As you can see, there's a little metal inside the red felt there. And that's actually a bushing. And sometimes that gets dried or just swollen. And that will prevent this from having an easy full range of motion, which could make your action feel more heavy and just not responsive. So that's one center pin. There's another center pin there, as you can see. So pretty much where these little red dots are, or the bushings. And then there's another one there. And then so you can see it a little bit easier, there's actually one there too. So I know you, I said you don't have to really take out the action, um, but if you want to get that one there, you would have to kind of take, take out the whole whip and assembly so you can get access to that one. And... I suggest you do it because this stuff works wonders. Another area you're going to be lubricating is this area right here. So this whole bushing there as well as the one below it for each one of these. And then you're also going to want to lubricate right here which makes this so much easier to go up and down. So. Let me get my applicator bottle. All right, so you get your applicator bottle. It's gonna be dripping out a little bit. And then you're just gonna drip a little bit in there. Go on this side, do the same thing. Drip a little bit in there. And then again on this side. And then down here, drip a little in there. And then a little in there. And you don't want a lot, maybe like two drops for each side or even one. And then what you're going to want to do after doing like each section, at least what I did, is I kind of just mashed down on the keys a few times and made sure that it worked its way inside there. And then you can put this whole piano down even without doing this and you will notice the biggest difference. This stuff is amazing. It has brought this action back to life. It is now easy, responsive, and fun to play. So next up, as I said before, you're going to be wanting to lubricate this area here, which are the damper lifter wires. So you're going to lubricate this side as well as that side. And then underneath as well. So there and there. And then up here, you're going to want to lubricate the bushing right there. So just make sure you're kind of getting it around in the circle. Remember, don't use a lot because actually this can mess up the glue if you use too much and then your bushings will come out. So remember, just use it sparingly and it will go a long way. And then do that for each one of these. And you can actually do the center pins which are here and there as well if you want to. Um, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. And then when you bring this thing all back down, it feels amazing. I cannot explain it. You have to try it out on your own piano. It has just made this thing so much more fun to play. And I hope that has helped you guys. So without further ado, let me show you how this thing sounds.
So sadly, this is going to be the conclusion of the CP80 restoration series. But don't worry, I'm still going to be making videos featuring this instrument. So if you found this whole series informative, please leave a big thumbs up as well as subscribe and share this to anyone who you think might enjoy it, your friends or family, or even to people who really don't care about it, because hey, I need the views. <laughs> also, don't forget to comment below about your own experiences with these beautiful instruments. And I hope this whole series has been able to just give you a greater knowledge and appreciation to this absolutely marvelous, beautiful instrument. You can tell I really love this thing. So again, everyone, thanks so much for watching this whole series. And stay tuned because more videos are going to be coming out. Thanks, everyone. See you later.